Hi there, my name is Bunny. I'm from Pilates and Yoga with Bunny and I'm really excited to share this little short workshop with you today. So what we're going to be doing is just working on um, the transitions with Chaturanga and trying to keep, you know, our body so it um, doesn't obtain any injuries in Chaturanga. Dandasana. Okay, so just to show you, when we think about a chaturanga, if you're not sure what it is, um, it's where we come to here and then we lower down into this halfway position and then we can add the up dog as well. Okay, so when we, when we look at progressions for, for chaturanga, um, what, what I find in my teaching experience, you know, as a yoga teacher and a Pilates teacher, obviously I'm always looking for um, ways to make sure people don't get injured. And I do find that in Chaturanga, people will actually go into this a little bit too quickly without actually really building the foundations and the core strength and making sure that the, the spine is nice and neutral and we're not putting pressure onto the low back. Um, I also find that people compromise upper body strength and we load way too much into the front of the shoulder by rounding the shoulder in. So this is um, this sort of half an hour is going to be about me discussing things, giving you tips and having a through, few little practices to keep you keep you safe. So this is going to be free from back pain and also shoulder, shoulder pain as well. Um, so we're gonna start with a little warm up through the, through the wrists. So if you can just interlink your fingers together and then circle the wrists around. So really bringing a nice bit of mobility into the wrists here, making sure that they are, you know, nice and free and freeing up the forearms. So when we think about a chaturanga position, we have a lot of pressure on, on the wrist and um, you know I've seen people as well you know get get wrist injuries and things like like that from just loading the wrist too much so try and just get warmth into the wrist and then we're going to just pull the fingers back one way so pushing the forearm away and lengthening lengthening out through um, through this forearm here yeah, so pulling the fingers back, just pushing the wrist away. And also I find that, you know, through my experience as a teacher that people will just rush through Chaturanga. Um, you know, they rush through if they sort of go to vinyasa classes or things like that. I mean, that's not really the type of classes that I tend to teach, but obviously I've attended lots of them. And I find that people will just rush through and really load up, load up the shoulders. And maybe they don't have the rotator cuff strength, um, you know, and the core strength to be able to actually hold their, hold their weight. There's a lot also into the triceps and in, you know, um, serratus and into your lats as, as well as, as your core and glutes. It's sort of everything really. Right. So, Bring yourself into a tabletop position and we're just going to have a little rock forwards and backwards through the fingers and just have a grip with your fingers. OK, so just try and sort of think about pushing the, the palm of the hand into the mat. Imagine you've got a little grape underneath the actual palm. So the knuckles are pushing in and try and draw the fingers up. So the fingers are sort of pulling inwards as we load Load the upper body a little bit, really working into the wrists. Just making sure those elbows aren't, you know, spiraling and hyperextending. So we want to encourage those elbow eyes to sort of face the front so we can round these shoulders down and back and activate our upper back. So we are using our fingers to, to do that. Now, just take yourself back into a little bit of a child's pose, stretch out the sides, walk those fingers further forwards and let the head come down to the mat. Stretching out the sides, 
creep those fingers a bit further away from you. So we can begin to just make sure that we're prepared and ready as we move through these little drills. So come up back into back into tabletop and cat cow through the spine. And when we cat cow through our spine, we're thinking about trying to engage the upper back, drawing the core up nice and tight, pulling the shoulder blades down and then exhaling, rounding. And we're going to push up through the through the shoulders, So really push, push away, open the shoulder blades. And then try and draw the shoulders down the back as, as well as pushing up. And then move the other way. So we're actively working on the upper body. We are actively thinking about what is happening through the, through the hands. It's not just a case of flinging our spine around all over the place. We're actively preparing. So as you exhale, I want you to really pull into the shoulders pull them apart and then slide the shoulders are down, down and away. So you're protracting the shoulders and you're taking them into depression as well. Then the other way. Right, so here, we're not, we don't want to create a wing into the shoulder blades. We want to draw them down. So we're still depressing the shoulders, but we're adding a teeny little bit of retraction. So we're trying to draw them down. Yes, that little bit, keeping the belly button pulled nice and tight. Okay, so you're gonna to start to feel here some activation through the, through the upper body, through the arms, through the core. One more. And then take that weight off your wrists. Sit back and circle your wrist. So give them a big circle round and round one way, round and round the other way. So now what I want to do is try and explain the elbow position. So when you come into your first little dip of your Chaturanga Dandasana, the weight is actually going forwards. So uh, if you can watch, watch. Take your knees so they're further back. And I'm actually going to tuck my toes. Now I've got my middle finger, so it's facing forwards. And remember, we've already activated those, those fingers. If you feel like you need a little bit longer wrist warm up, then you're going to take that now. Just pause the video. Okay, wrap those shoulders around. Then we lean that weight forward. So as I'm leaning my weight forwards, I'm engaging through my core muscles. So I'm drawing my navel in wrapping my shoulders around and then my shoulders are going to come over my wrists. So from there I need to actually take my knees back slightly and I'm going to make sure that I'm tucked under so I've got a big long straight position through my body. It doesn't help I've got a really baggy top on today. Then we're going to let that weight come forwards. I'm just going to let those knees shuffle forwards a little bit and then I'm going to squeeze my elbows into my side and just lower lower down halfway. So I'm pulling my shoulders down and back and then I'm gonna push back up and come back. So when you think about your chaturanga, your weight actually comes, comes forwards. So I'm gonna do the same thing. Let me just tuck this top in out of the way so you can see a little bit more of what's happening. Okay, so spreading the weight through the hands, I'm gonna come forwards, yeah, I'm tucking. And I'm going to draw my navel in. I'm really strong through my through my shoulders. I'm pulling them down. And then my elbows are going to stay tucked into my sides as I imagine I'm squeezing. Okay, and then I'm going to hover down halfway. And then I'm going to push back up. So you should feel how, how strong that is. Um, and it takes quite a lot of time to be able to build up the strength to do a full chaturanga in a in a plank to come down into this position without compromising shoulder health or core um, and losing, losing, you know, and because and, you're losing that, um, that core strength because you're gonna put pressure into your low back. Right, so 
The next thing I'm going to talk about is the elbow position. And I've got, got two blocks here. So years and years ago, I went to a workshop and it was all about chaturanga. And we used, we used two blocks. And I've never actually forgotten this drill because it did really, really help me to understand what was happening. So uh, I say blocks, sorry, I've got bricks. So these are the really um, strong bricks, but it doesn't matter what you're using. You could even use water bottles or tin cans or something like that, just that you can put behind your wrists. So when you have these items here, your wrists are going to butt up to your items, whatever they are. Yeah, water bottles or, um, you know, like I say, tin cans or books. It doesn't matter what. But this is going to show you the position of the arms and the position of the elbows. So I'm going to do exactly the same thing that I've just done. So my weight then will come forwards. OK, and I won't knock the blocks over. OK, so I won't knock the blocks over because I'm taking my weight forwards without rounding my shoulders in. So I'm pulling back. So the elbows are coming into the side. So I'm looking at like this angle. You know, you've got a right, right angle and then it's coming into your side. So you're really sort of working on this, this right angle without rounding this shoulder. Yeah, and without really putting too much pressure onto the wrist. So we're using the fingers, okay? So when you're strong enough to come into that plank position and do that full chaturanga, when you come down, you come down so those elbows are into your sides, okay? And you do not let the blocks tip over, yeah? So that is something useful for you to practice and being mindful that when you do come forwards, you know, if you're on your knees, you're just going to have to shuffle your knees forwards a little bit. So you've got got that that range there. So I find that very useful. And. You know, you can even practice with the hands onto the blocks or bricks. Um, just so that you don't have to go quite so low. So it's more on an incline position so that you can build your, build your strength. So when you come down, obviously that the depth isn't quite so far. Okay, the depth isn't quite so far. So I can use these blocks on a high position as long as I'm absolutely 100% and they're not gonna fall over. Or you can use a, a low surface, a coffee table or you know, something something like that that's quite low to the floor, padding out your knees. Yeah. So as long as you're hundred percent sure these aren't going to aren't going to tip, you keep that core nice and tight. Yeah. And we sort of spiral the thigh bones inwards, so we protect protect the back, squeezing the glutes, and then elbows coming into the sides. So when the elbows are level with your sides, that's where we stop. Yeah, so you're only going to go further, further down and away from you if you're then moving on into Cobra or Up Dog. And we'll come on to that a little bit later. So let's look at the lower body a little bit and think about how the how the weight will transfer and think about how the, the core strength as well so what i what i see in in chaturanga even with knees down is i see the core go i see the back go and even if you are taking that weight forwards i quite often see you know this type of thing and the the bums just sort of down and then you let everything go and roll down onto onto the mat so quite commonly as i just showed you then feet will sort of roll out to the side, the glutes will switch off 
uh, the, the core is switching off. So we want to main, maintain that in, you know, in the, in the Chaturanga Dandasana on your knees, that you are engaging through your, through your core. Just tuck this in again out of the way so you can see. So we are engaging through our core. We're keeping our core pulled in. Yeah, so we're thinking about a little bit of engagement through pelvic floor. I'm gonna push the tops of my feet down into the mat, draw my shoulders down, keep my elbows where they are still in space, move my hips forwards. Okay, so I'm really strong through my, through my tummy, my whole body, I've got my glutes squeezed. And then when we lower down, we're in that nice straight line. Okay, and then being able to push, push back up. Now, if you don't have the strength to push back up yet, just hold, hold that, that position. So hold the position, um, you know, just take that time under tension because that will, that will help you as you transition through. So let's try it, let's try again, keep the toes tucked. So do, the, do this with me, yep. Pull down, keep the core nice and tight, push the feet down onto the mat. Try not to let the, let the lower body switch off. Pull the shoulders down, elbow creases pulled down, upper back nice and engaged, and then lower down halfway, and then exhale, push back up. So even on your knees, it's pretty, pretty strong. It's pretty strong. And actually to regress this, possibly from how you've been doing it already for a long time, um, may suddenly feel very, very, very difficult. Um, but you want to always ma maintain that you're doing these things correctly before you move on. Because if you think about doing this over and over and over again in a vinyasa class, then what's what's going to happen is you're just going to put more pressure on these shoulders all the time and you're going to end up getting a shoulder injury at the front or even worse a lower back injury um and you can read a little bit more about how i got into pilates and yoga on my website and the link is um in the in the comments below because i know all about this from my own injuries um and that's how I found Pilates and yoga, okay? So injuries is a big thing that we really always want to avoid. So let me just show you again before we, before we move on. Right, so we come forwards, we pull the shoulders back, we're nice and long through the neck, we're tucking the toes, we're drawing the, the navel up, we're spiraling the arms, activating through the upper back, Okay, and then we lower down, keeping everything tight, pushing the tops of the feet into the mat, nice and long, and then we push back up. Okay, so moving on from there, another thing that I tend to see is the chicken neck. So the chicken neck is, this is what I call it, is where we push our chin forwards. Now, when we push our chin forwards, we put, we lose that engagement, okay? We're losing that engagement through the upper back muscles. Yeah, and we're putting pressure onto the neck. So it's almost like people try and reach their chin down to the floor to make them feel like they're going that little bit lower. So whenever you're in any type of poses, do the foundational stuff. Get the, get the technique, get the cues before, before then you move on. So often in a class, there isn't time to talk about all these things, which is why I'm giving you this little sort of uh, workshop tutorial now. Right, so next on this one, watch what happens with my neck. So I'd like you to actually watch. So we're gonna come forwards. That's it, spreading the weight, drawing through the fingers, tucking the navel, pushing the tops of the feet into the mat. And then I'm gonna make sure that I'm actively drawing the nape of my neck up to the ceiling and I've got an invisible string through crown of head. 
Then as I come forwards, I'm going to keep the nape of my neck long and pushing up towards the ceiling. So try a few rounds of that. Pause the video if you want to. Go ahead, try it. Then come back and see where you're, where you're at with that, that head position. Um, because this is often what happens. So people come forwards, they come down, and then they drop the head. And they think, oh, I'm really close to the floor. Okay, so again, we're trying to main, maintain that we're, we're strong into, into that position there. Okay, so let's, let's think about how active the, the body is through the lower part of the body and what the lower, lower part of the body can do to help. So in the lower part of the body, we're looking at the, the thigh bones, um, you know, being neutral. And we, we, want to, um, we want to maintain that we don't put pressure into this, this low back. And often people will, you know, like I say, they lose, they lose their core and they will put pressure onto the lumbar back. So either, either through several reasons, their core, their core strength isn't strong enough to be able to hold them in that position. So they, you know, there's a postural imbalance, maybe they're tighter through their, their low back. They haven't got the strength through core and glutes to be able to bring them into that, that strong, strong neutral position. And then when they come through into that, we start to progress and we come down towards the mat. They either don't have the upper body strength or mobility and they sink everything into the low part of the back. So if you, if you watch a moment, so what I'm gonna do is just come forwards and lay, lay down, and I'm gonna let my feet roll out to the side, okay? Now, immediately, if you, if you see what happens when my feet flop out to the side, okay, I have um, a wobbly bum. So we're not gonna be able to activate through our glutes with our feet dropped out. Now, what's that? What that is going to do is compromise the back. Um, also, we're not going to be able to really engage the core fully. So, we want to try and imagine that we are really strong through the whole of the low body, and making sure that we don't compromise that that low back to start to move into you know, the, the cobra as we lower down or even the, even the up dog. So if I show you what I'm, what I'm talking about, I'm gonna come into down dog and I'm gonna roll, roll forwards into plank. Okay, keeping my, my core nice and tight. My elbows are gonna tuck into my side and everything's nice and strong. And then I'm gonna move forwards and push up into my up dog. Now in my up dog, I'm drawing my thigh bones in together and I have a really strong position through my body. My core is super engaged and I am trying to maintain all of those cues that we did where we pulled the shoulders down and back. So we are strong through the upper back. And again, I keep talking about this core, but it's really important. Otherwise you're just gonna, over time, when you're doing these drills over and over again, for some of you doing vinyasa classes, you might do 20 or 30 of these in one hour. Yep, so imagine that if you're doing that three times a week and you're not doing it, you think it's okay, but you're not doing it properly. Imagine the, the pressure that you're putting down onto that, that lumbar spine. So, as you come forwards, come up onto the balls of the feet, don't be proud, drop the knees, keep the tailbone tucked, lower down halfway, okay, and then push up, yeah, and then take the toes, and then maybe you lift the knees, yeah, so you keep the tummy pulled up, so I'm going to show you again. 
show you again. So down dog, roll. Yep, yeah, keep the core nice and tight. Lower down, drop the knees, tuck and then lift. Okay, so I'm engaging my tummy muscles and I, my, my shoulders are sort of over my wrists. I'm trying to draw my upper back down. So I'm not just going and dropping my hips down to the mat, rolling my feet in, glutes are switched off. Because that actually is just gonna put so much pressure onto, onto your back. Okay. So working with, with knees down until you're ready, you may have heard the cue, knees, chest, chin. So from down dog, we roll forwards, forwards. Then in our, in our plank position, we go knees, chest, chin. Then into cobra or up dog. And then back to your down dog. Okay, so knees, chest, chin is another, another cue that you might have heard, but still in that knees, knees, chest, chin, we still wanna maintain that our core's tight. So when we go down dog, we come up and forwards, roll to plank, yeah, core nice and tight. So from here, if you haven't got that bit yet, then go to knees, chest, chin, and push up. Okay, so I've given you lots and lots of things to, to think about. So what I'm gonna do now is just take you through um, just two, two of those little vinyasas. And after this class, if you wanna go on and practice this a little bit longer, um, feel free to do that. I appreciate that your arms might be getting a little bit tired because it might be something that you know, you're not really used to doing. So see how, see how you feel. Right, so walk all the way to the front of your mat and come up into a high mountain. Reaching up, we're gonna look up towards the fingers, try and tuck the tailbones, draw the thigh bones up. Inhale, as we exhale, sweep the arms wide. Come down to forward fold. Bending the knees heavily, letting the head hang. Tailbone nice and high. Inhale into a flat back position. Reaching up, either hands to floor, hands to shins, or hands to thighs, drawing those kneecaps up, core nice and tight. Exhale, step back one leg, second leg either into your plank or your knees down. So remember what we've been talking about. We come forwards, we lower down, either with your knees. We come up into up dog, our core's nice and tight. We're pushing the tops of the feet into the mat. We're drawing the thigh bones up. We're not letting the legs roll out. Apologies, I've got a cramp in my foot. And then we exhale as we come to down dog. Okay, step forwards, front of mat. One step, step second foot, one foot, second foot, flat back, exhale to fold, inhale all the way up. Okay, so we're gonna do one more like that. Inhale, reach, really high, extend through the whole body, look up, tuck the tailbone, draw the core in. Imagine that you're into that, that plank position, how strong you need to be, your quads are switched on. Yeah, exhale. Come down into forward fold. So bending the knees heavily, letting the chest come down to thighs. Head's going to just be nice and long through the back of the neck. Inhale into a flat back position. So tailbone high, fingers to floor. Pulling the shoulders away from the ears. Exhale, step back one leg. Second leg, this time, if you did high plank last time, go to knees down, go to knees down. Tuck that tailbone, come forwards, 
glue those elbows into your side, then up into knees down and watch what's happening with the, with the feet. So draw the shoulders down, keep the core nice and tight. We're lengthening through the spine so we're not putting pressure onto that lumbar. Then tucking the toes, exhale into down dog. Inhale, step to front of mat, into flat back. Exhale, fold. And inhale, sweep all the way up into that high mountain. Exhaling, bringing your hands down to your heart center. And well done. So I hope you, I hope you enjoyed that and you got, got some benefit out of those, those drills. Remember that some things will work for some people, not for others. So it might just be, you know, that, um, that one of those things I said to you has sunk in and it's helped you with your Chaturanga Dandasana into Cobra or Up Dog. So um, please take the time to go and watch this again and practice because building up that strength um, so we don't compromise the shoulder or the back is, is important. And understanding that actually sometimes we need to regress before we move on is um, a little bit of eating humble pie sometimes. Um, but in the long term, you're going to see further, further progress and avoid, avoid injury. So I really hope you enjoyed this. Thank you for sharing this half an hour with me. Um, I'd love to hear your comments if you've tried it and also how you're, how you're progressing. And I would also love a subscribe and a thumbs up. Um, and thank you very much. If you wanna find more out about my, my classes, you can have a look at my, look at my website. Um, and I'd love it if you read my, my blog that um, does actually explain how I got into yoga and Pilates and why injuries are such a, you know, a big, big thing on my, on my radar. So thank you very much. I hope you enjoy the rest of your day, evening, morning, whenever you're watching this and um, namaste.